Shalom everybody, hope you're doing well. Shavuot upon us so soon. I want to share with you guys two quick thoughts. Right, the Chag, the holiday of Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah, the receiving of the Torah, which is commemorating the unbelievable spiritual historic event from so many thousands of years ago, but also reliving it today in our generation. One thought about Shavuot is that we learned from the Gemara that B'Shabbat Nitznat Torah, that the Torah was given on, was given on Shabbat. Right, that that event, that moment, that time took place on Shabbat. And as with most, if not all things in Judaism, there's so many different things to say about that. But one interesting question that came up for me today was that we know that according to Jewish law that you're not supposed to transfer ownership on Shabbat. You're not supposed to give something on Shabbat. So how is it possible that the Creator of the world gave the Holy Torah to the Jewish people on Shabbat? Right? That's transferring ownership. Um, one idea that came into my mind is that to give a gift, to give something brand new to another person is not allowed on Shabbat. Right? But what about if the thing already belonged to them from before? There is an idea that if you, if you give the gift in a different kind of way, if you give the gift to that person or that object, you transfer ownership even before Shabbat, so it's totally fine. So the idea that I had was that the Torah was always the Jewish people's. Right? The, the moment, the, the event that took place on Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, was a moment in time. It, it, it was this moment where the Jewish people had this, this interaction, this, this, this experience of the divine. Like never was and never will be until who knows what will be in the future. Right? But the actual Torah was never not theirs. Right? We learned from the Zohar that the entire world was created from the Torah, with the Torah, that God looked into the Torah and created the whole world. It's a whole metaphysical, spiritual topic in and of itself. But the idea being that, that the Torah was always part of the Jewish people, on some level, the entire world. It's embedded in us. It, 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 it is us. It's our spiritual genes. It was never separate from us. Right? It's historically, the people of the world, humanity, forgot about the spiritual guidelines of the Torah, so there needs to be this historical spiritual event of actually handing over the Torah, on some level returning to the Torah, or maybe even more accurately, reminding the Jewish people that such a thing exists. Right? But it was always ours. We were always connected to it. There was never ever a separation. Right? On some level, that incredible event that took place on Mount Sinai so long ago was merely, so to speak, a reminder right, of what is what was, what always will be, right? the, the essence of reality. So, again, this idea that the Torah is so part, of, it's within us. It's, I mean, we, we learn in the Midrash, we learn in, in the teaching that Avraham and the other patriarchs and matriarchs learned, kept the whole Torah. What's the obvious question about that is that the Torah wasn't given for a few generations after they lived in this world. Right? But they were accessing the Torah that's embedded in reality. Right? There's an aspect of Torah that's already there, even be, before the giving of the Torah. And, 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 and Shavuot comes to remind us that, that yes, the Torah is, is found in books and in texts and in scrolls, but it's also found inside of us and inside the entire world. Right? The teachings, the, 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 the spiritual ideas can be found all around us. Right? And uh, Shavuot comes to remind us about that. One other quick thought is that Shavuot is very connected to the agricultural cycles of, of Eretz Israel, of the land of Israel. And we know that when there was a Beit HaMikdash, when there was a temple back in, in Jerusalem, um, so we brought a wheat offering on Shavuot. We brought the, the new crop, right? The first of the wheat offerings was brought on, on Shavuot. And the, the language of the Torah is so beautiful. It says, right? And you shall bring a new offering to God, to the Creator. Right? And on some level, it's like the first of the wheat, so it's the new offering. It's the first time this year you know, that we're bringing the wheat, so it's considered new. But on a spiritual idea, all the rabbis, all the tzaddikim, many of the, of the texts bring down that the mincha chadashah, this new offering, is us. After counting 49 days of, of the Omer, from Pesach to Shavuot, we're working on ourselves day after day, midah, attribute after attribute, trying to refine ourselves, perfect ourselves the, the best that we can in our own humanly kind of way. And when we stand you know, before the Creator of all on Shavuot, when we enter this Chag, we're hoping that there's something about us that we've renewed, that we've refined, that we've made better, that on some level we are different. We're a different person than last year on Shavuot, than even Pesach just seven weeks ago. Right? And Shavuot comes to remind us that, that Shavuot itself and all the holidays, and on some level every single day, we're given this opportunity to really work on ourselves and, and bring out new aspects of ourselves. Sending love and blessing, a beautiful Shavuot to everyone from the land of Israel. All the best. Chag Sameach.